Hello dear students, I hope you will be fine. My name is Engineer Mehmozokya. I am lecturer in the Department of Technology, Sarraj University of Science and Information Technology, Shower. As I am teaching you the subject design of hydraulic structure, today is your lecture number 13. In lecture number 13, we will continue about the topic uh, courses on them. Uh, in today's lecture, we will study about uh, the water pressure, in which we will study about reservoir and tail water loads on the dam. So, coming to the topic, water pressure. Uh, water pressure on the upstream phase is the main uh, destabilizing or turning force acting on a gravity dam. Uh, tail water pressure helps in the stability. Uh, although the weight of the water varies slightly with temperature, but uh, the variation is usually ignored. The, uh, the unit mass of water is uh, uh, taken as uh, 1000 kg per cubic meter, and uh, the specific weight or the unit weight is taken as uh, 10 kN per cubic meter instead of 9.81 kN per cubic meter. So the water pressure always acts normal to the uh, face of the dam, means perpendicular to the dam. Uh, it is convenient to determine the components of forces in the horizontal and vertical direction instead of the total force on the inclined surface directly. The pressure intensity P varies linearly with the depth of water measured below the free surface Y and in, is expressed as P is equal to gamma W Y. So, if uh, unit weight of water is denoted by uh, gamma W, then if you multiply it with the total depth of water, you will get the total pressure intensity and the unit of uh, pressure intensity is written per square meter, which is Pascal. Next is uh, upstream si side uh, phase vertical means when the pressure on the upstream phase of the dam is vertical the water pressure diagram is triangular in shape with a pressure intensity of gamma edge at the base where edge is the depth of water. As you can see this is the uh, total pressure intensity at the base gamma w into h where h is the total height of this water. The total water pressure per unit length is horizontal and is given by p h is equal to uh, 1 over 2 gamma w h square. So uh, this total pressure p h is horizontal and is given by 1 by 2 gamma w into h square. This is the height while uh, gamma w is the unit weight of a liquid. It acts horizontally at a height of h by 3 above the base of the dam. So the centroid of this force is uh, at a height of h by 3 distance. That uh, if this height, total height is h, then uh, from this point up to this point, uh, this uh, distance is h by 3 and the, uh, this force pH will act at this point as a whole. When the upstream phase is inclined, uh, when the upstream phase uh, ABC is either inclined or partially vertical and partially inclined, the force due to water pressure can be calculated in terms of horizontal components pH and the vertical components PY. The uh, horizontal component is given as earlier x horizontal at height of x by 3 above the base. The vertical component PV of the water pressure per unit length is equal to the uh, weight of the water in the prism ABCD as you can see uh, ABCD the whole water will be uh, the weight of the whole water pressure in this prism will be equal to the area into multiplied by unit weight of this uh, the liquid at this point. 
For convenience, the weight of water is found in two parts, PV1 and PV2, by dividing the trapezium ABC into a rectangle PCDE and a triangle ABE. So, for convenience, uh, this uh, ABCD is divided into two components or two parts. The first part is the uh, rectangle part, which is uh, uh, BCDE while the other part is the triangle which is ABE so uh, easily we can find the area of this rectangle by multiplying the height and weight and multiplying the this area with the unit weight of the liquid we will get the uh, total weight of water per unit length and also this is the triangle so finding the triangular area uh, the triangle area uh, we can easily multiply it with the unit weight of the liquid in this portion and we will get the total unit uh, or we will get the total weight of water per unit length. Thus the vertical components PV is equal to PV1 plus PV2 equal to the weight of water in VCDE plus weight of water in ABE. The lines of action of PV1 and PV2 will pass through the respective centroid of the uh, rectangle and triangle. So, the total force, uh, the total weight of uh, uh, water in this portion, PV is equal to PV1 plus PV2, and this, this, uh, the weight of these forces, these forces PV1 and PV2 will pass through the respective centroid of this uh, uh, rectangle and triangle. Next topic is uh, uplift pressure. Uh, water has a tendency to seep through the pores of fisheries and of the material in the body of the dam and the foundation material and through the joints between the body of the dam and its foundation at the base. The seeping water exerts pressure. The uplift pressure is defined as the upward pressure of water as it uh, flows or seeps through the body of the dam or its foundation. Uh, a portion of the weight of the dam will be uh, supported on the upward pressure of water. Hence, a uh, net foundation reaction due to the vertical force will reduce. The area over which the uplift pressure act uh, has uh, been a question of investigation from the early part of this century. One school of thought recommend that a value of one third uh, to two third of the area should be considered as effective over the which uh, the uplift acts. The second school of thought recommend that the effective area may be taken approximately equal to the total area. Now, according to the Indian codes or Indian standards, uh, IS 6521984, there are two constitution elements in uplift. The first one is the area factor of the or the percentage of area on which uplift acts, and the intensity factor or the ratio which the actual intensity of uplift pressure bears to the intensity gradient extending from head water to tail water at uh, various points. The total area should be considered as effective to account for uplift. The pressure gradient shall then be extending linearly to heads corresponding to reservoir level and tail water level. In case of drain hole, the uplift pressure at the lines of drains exceeds the tail water pressure by one third of the differential between the reservoir and the tail water heads. The pressure gradient shall then be extended linearly to heads corresponding to corresponding level and tail water level. While in case of a crack, the uplift is assumed to be the reservoir pressure from the upstream pan and the end to the end of the crack and from there to vary linearly to the tail water or drain water pressure or drain pressure. In the absence of lines of drains and uh, for the extreme loading conditions F and G, the uplift shell 
be taken as very varying linearly from the appropriate reservoir water pressure at the upstream phase to the appropriate tail water pressure at the downstream phase. Uplift pressures are not affected by earthquakes. So, in case uh, we have uh, before cracking, the total uplift pressure diagram will be in this shape or in this trapezoidal shape. At this point, the total uplift pressure will be equal to uh, gamma W into H. While uh, at this point, the total water pressure, uh, uplift pressure will be equal to gamma W into H. Where H is this uh, height, uh, and in this case, uh, the H, capital H is this height. While final uplift pressure diagram uh, for the crack section will be in this shape. In this case, we have uh, uplift pressure at this point will be equal to uh, gamma W into H, capital H. While in this case, the uh, uh, uplift pressure will be equal to gamma W into small h. And this is the end of our today's lecture.